The roots of Farley Mowat's environmentalism probably go back to his service as a very young officer in the Second World War, where he learned what a vicious, destructive animal the human being can be. Heartsick and discouraged, he went to the Arctic as a biologist. There, he renewed his childhood fascination with animals and also found Aboriginal people living in relative harmony with nature. Unfortunately, those Aboriginal communities were also being neglected and denigrated by the government that claimed to be taking paternal care of them. The result was classic animal books like Never Cry Wolf and stinging, angry social commentary like People of the Deer and the Desperate People. Through all the years since, and through all his 40-odd books, Mowat has continued to celebrate the non-human world, the world of what he calls the others. I want to... Um, I want to start where nobody wants to start except me. Tell me about the great oak. Tell me about the great oak. Ooh, you're really laying it on me, aren't you? The great oak. Hmm. The great oak, about the same period, for 15th century, was the most, one of the most numerous, if not the most numerous. Uh, certainly, it constituted the largest biotic mass weight of living animals uh, uh, in the avian world, the bird world, uh, in the North Atlantic. It was found on both sides of the North Atlantic. Uh, it uh, nested on uh, uh, rocky islands, unoccupied islands, well off from shore where it couldn't be reached by predators. And the reason it chose these was because it was flightless. Uh, it was the original penguin. It was known as the penguin, and that was the original Basque name for it. Uh, we have seen, all seen photographs of uh, enormous masses of penguin in the Atlantic, in, in the Atlantic, uh, in the Antarctic. Well, they're a related uh, animal, but not the same, not even the same uh, class, the same genera, rather. But the the great auk, which was uh, a knock, not a penguin, as we see it today, was so abundant. It was equally abundant with the way they are, the way they, the namesake is in the Antarctic today. And they occupied this whole of the North Atlantic, the entire coast from Britain right around to Iceland to Greenland and all the way down to Labrador and down to here and down as far as Cape Cod. They uh, were used extensively by the first uh, fishermen from Europe who came across here and who fished the Grand Banks. They needed bait because they, they were fishing with hand lines and, and, uh, and long lines and so on, so they, they, they were bait fishermen. Uh, the bait was, was great ox. They would uh, anchor or, or, or more uh, offshore from one of these little islands, the, the, the funks, the gulfers of one set. There, there are little islands like this all the way along the coast, and some of them still bear the names uh, which are relevant to the, peng the penguin, the great ox. And they would go ashore on their boats and they would slaughter these animals because of these birds, which were big, they were big as geese. You just whack them on the head with a paddle, with an oar, and uh, knock them down. Uh, then they boiled them up on the spot to get, uh, no, the first, first of all, they cut them up for, for bait. And then they discovered that these animals were so fat, these birds were so fat, that they, if they boiled them, they could get oil. And oil was the second most valuable product of the sea in those days. Fish itself, protein was one. But oil was, was, was maybe even more valuable because it was it had an enormous uh, variety of uses in Europe. So anyway, the great, the great auk provided uh, both meat for bait, meat to eat, but that was small, and but oil. So they started doing it systematically. They, they would set up uh, refineries on these, on these little islands and they would drive the birds, which couldn't fly. They'd get between them in the water and drive them to a killing ground in the center slaughter them with clubs. Millions, literally, literally millions of them. And until they had destroyed the entire great auk population of the whole North Atlantic, uh, the last survivors were apparently two great auks or three on the island of Circe, a tiny island off the south coast of, of Iceland, which were discovered uh, around the middle of the 19th century by some egg collectors. Great ox egg by then, of course, had become uh, like gold. Uh, if you could find a great ox egg, uh, it could be sold to a collector, a human collector uh, of uh, rarities for mm, five, ten thousand dollars, whatever. 
Anyway, two Icelandic fishermen found these last three ox. They had one egg. They killed the three ox and smashed the egg. And that <laughs> was the end forever, forever of the great ox. The Green Interview is co-produced and directed by Chris Beckett with the generous cooperation of Mount St. Vincent University in Halifax, Nova Scotia. For The Green Interview, I'm Silver Donald Cameron. See you next time.